In today's video, I'm going to be showing off my second edition Space Wolves Codex for Warhammer 40k. It's about 25 years old or so. Um, it's not very grim, it's not very dark, it's very colorful and unusual. And for some reason, I think the second edition books have retained their value in the resale market. I'm not sure why. Um, but if you're into Space Wolves, that army, um, or you play them or whatever, then maybe this video will be of interest to you so you don't have to go out and spend the money on the book. I came into the book. Um, someone gifted me a bunch of older Space Wolf models that were still on the sprue, and I put them together but made them into Death Watch, and, uh, which really adds a lot of flavor to my Death Watch army. And... Uh, this book um, would be great for someone who wants to play an older edition of Warhammer. I'm not that person, but I really do enjoy the artwork of John Blanche and Mike Gibbons and uh, Tony Acklin and all the older uh, artists. So <clears throat> let's check it out together. Okay, this is the um, flip through for the Codex Space Wolves from Warhammer 40k. Um, I don't know a whole lot about playing Space Wolves. Um, I had a someone gifted me a whole box of uh, sprues from I don't know sixth or seventh edition, and this was also in the uh, in the gift. So. Um, this is quite a bit older than a lot of the models that I've got. The models I kit bashed into Death Watch, which was a lot of fun. Um, gives my Death Watch army a lot of flavor. Um, but anyway, this is, I think, in the, I think it's the first codex for Space Wolves. It's also um, an addition where the codex is, there was grim dark on the inside, but the covers were very colorful there was the blues the greens the yellows the reds and oranges it's just very striking and you don't really see it as often um, or at all in the current um, incarnation of the game not saying it's better not saying it's worse it's just different it's fun to flip through and see how the game has evolved I mean look at the color on the back here I mean it's just so bright it screams neither grim nor dark so um, we're just going to flip through it. I'm not going to go through a lot of the rules or compare and contrast how the units have changed. That's not really what I'm going to be doing in this channel. This is basically a way for someone who, if you enjoy or you play Space Wolves, you collect the army, you read the fiction, etc., and you're interested in seeing what the books look like, um, some of the artwork um, that was attributed to them 25 years ago, this is your chance. These older books, um, depending on where you find them, if you're only able to access them on eBay, then I think this book goes for around $50, um, give or take. So I think there's, um, I think there's a lot to be enjoyed from it. Um, I was a fan of the Warhammer artwork years and years and years before I ever painted my first model. Um, and uh, being that I'm colorblind, uh, you might make me, you might hear me call out a color. I'll call it green when in fact it's yellow, or vice versa. I was always attracted to the black and white artwork, so um, which is a lot more grim and dark. So here in the contents, we have the artwork. First name, of course, John Blanche, Wayne England, Dave Gallagher, Jess Goodwin, and Mark Gibbons. And the story is by Bill King, also known as William King, who wrote. Um, Godric and Felix novels, as well as the Space Wolf Omnibus, which I have on my shelf. Maybe I'll uh, do a video for those in the future. I absolutely love William King's writing, or Bill King as he's known here. I think it's some of the best fantasy fiction that is able to be read. I've also got an art book by John Blanche and I think Mark Gibbons that called Rat Spike that I'm going to dig out and flip through, which is an ex extraordinarily rare book. So. Um, these books were a combination of black and white 
and color photography. So we have um, we have some some striking images here in the front. Some of the terrain and the scenery, the trees and whatnot are a lot different than what you'd see now in a codex. Um, again, not saying it's better or worse. It's just different. Um, I've got a book somewhere on the shelf that shows it was published by Games Workshop how to make your own train out of um, out of polystyrene and flock and glue and all that stuff so um, you don't really see that a whole lot anymore either but here's the first splash page of some black and white artwork just really busy artwork really dark um, really foreboding um, type of atmosphere that they that they created in their in their books and their work, which drew me to the game. Um, same as role-playing games like D&D or Tunnels and Trolls, I was always fascinated by the artwork because where I grew up and the friends that I have did not really afford me an opportunity to play the game. I was limited to flipping through the books and reading the rules and just using my imagination. Um, just kind of playing out scenarios in my head and um, so, so that's why these videos are, are here for someone who wants to flip through the books and just kind of let their imagination um, get the better of them. Often the imagination or the idea of something is uh, a lot more fun or engaging than the reality of it. So I love this piece of artwork right here. This is probably... I think this belongs in a Vampire Counts book. It's probably the most grim, dark thing I've ever seen. So that that piece that piece repeats itself in a few other places here. Um, but it's just like a lot of other codexes. Of, of course, the units have changed over the years. But you'll see the history of the Space Wolves. There's a history of Fenris that I that I flipped through already. Um, but you'll see different badges, um, different markings and descriptions of different units. This guy right here reminds me of somebody from an 80s rock band. Maybe he was in Bolt Thrower. He kind of looks like Simon Bisley's Lobo with his with his spiked hair and the, the face paint and stuff. Um, again, that's that's something that you only see in the older editions, just that style of, of artwork. You have a full-blown battle report. I wanted to kind of show this off because just to show you how spoiled we are in the modern day with YouTube and the advent of video and podcasts, um, you can just plug in any sort of battle report you want to see and watch it. And I know it's still a popular thing that's printed in White Dwarf magazine, um, but to be honest, I've never been able to read much into those. After a few paragraphs, my brain kind of turns into oatmeal and I lose interest. Um, but here we have the Gazkul Thraka's Orc Warband uh, being played by Jervis Johnson against Andy Chambers' Space Wolf Battalion. And they, they take the photographs of the army and then they give each unit a, a little symbol right here that you can see. Like Ragnar Blackmane, the Space Wolf Lord, has this, he has this little logo right there next to his name. And then not sure exactly why they did this I don't know why they just didn't take photos but they created a deployment map and then the first turn over here um, all the units are represented by those little symbols or tokens and then they're laid out like back here we have the golf big mob you know here's a big unit of them back there so when you look at this I guess it's easier to to tell what's what rather than just take photos I'm not sure I think that this is kind of an elaborate setup that requires some cross-referencing unnecessarily. And then here you can see how the game has evolved quite a bit. The, the terrain pieces, um, again, they're not worse, they're not better, they're just different. And um, you, see, you see terrain and hills and rocks that are uh, obviously handmade. You know, you can't just walk into a games workshop or hobby store and, and buy something like that. It's um, and again, it continues. Here's some more. Here's some more uh, photos. Maybe some top-down photos would have made this a little bit easier to see what's going on. Maybe not. Either way, it's 
it's cool that it's in a codex and you can read through and see what happens and <clears throat> excuse me I'm assuming that at the end the space wolves are victorious I haven't uh, I guess if I'm gonna read two paragraphs then I should probably read the end to see who wins or what the outcome is but it's definitely you know it's eight or ten pages at least so um, here we've got Bjorn the Fell-Handed, one of the coolest dreadnoughts in the game. Um, he's got his assault cannon and lightning claw. He's got his banner down here, some up close of the of the decals and the vehicle markings. And here are the different companies of the Space Wolves. There's the Grey Hunters, Long Fangs, and Blood Claws. I think the units, a lot of the, um, I think they're just tactical marines, the majority of them. Um, I think the majority of the units that I kit bashed into Death Watch I made as having come from the Blood Claw uh, uh, company of Space Wolves, and all of the all of the uh, the Marines have bare heads. They don't have helmets. They've got wild red hair and mohawks and beards, and then the um, and then the um, the sergeants of each unit would have. The actual wolf head, wolf head, which we haven't seen just yet. Um, I'll have to dig out those models and kind of show off my hybrid Death Watch Space Wolves. Here's Ragnar Blackmane as one of the wildest. Here's Ragnar Blackmane, one of the models that uh, definitely needed a, a recent upgrade. I think he got it about two years ago. <clears throat> The banners definitely would make him look a little bit bigger in today's standard of the game next to some Primaris, but um, that's what everyone was playing with for a long, long time, so it's nice to see how the game has evolved. And I'm not sure if uh, Injal, Stormcaller, the Rune Priest, or Jal, or Injal, <clears throat> not sure if he's been updated, but he's got a cool raven in his hand and a Psyker, a Cyber Raven, not Psyker. So, lots of cool color photos here. This is probably my favorite banner in the, in the whole game. The Honored Company banner depicting the great Grey Wolf Lehman Russ himself. So that's pretty neat. That's probably one of the more uh, intricate and colorful banners that, that I've seen through the Codex. There's some Terminators at the bottom. So it's a cool book. Um, here we've got the War Gear cards. Um, I don't think those are part of the newer codexes. Um, and you can see how some of them are for specific units. I guess this is a precursor to data cards or whatever they're called, where it's the unit with their stat lines and special rules. <clears throat> On the card themselves, I know I've seen those for Age of Sigmar. I'm not sure if in 40K. I haven't played 40K since the pandemic, unfortunately. So. Um, I did get some painting done and definitely bought some more models, but no gaming. So this is as close to gaming as I'm getting. Here we've got the banners. And if we read right here, it says these black and white banner designs have been provided for you to copy and then paint. So to be honest, I don't even know how in the hell that works. That's something to have to Google. Maybe there's another YouTube video out there. But here's Ragnar's company banner. I guess I can photocopy it, print it out, paint it, and then affix it to a model with you know, transfer paper or something to that effect. Um, again, we're spoiled in today's day and age where the models are high quality plastic, the, the transfer decals are second to none. So um, then we get into the special rule, or I'm sorry, the forces. Um, lots more cool artwork. Um, not everything is, you know, like this is a little bit different style. Not everything is. <coughs> Not everything is really high-end, uh, super detailed. Some of it is, is more abstract looking. And I like some of the little the little pieces here that you see scattered around. These, these really make the book shine, some of the smaller details. Um, so a lot of the units are probably still available in 9th edition or the current in rendition of the game. I'm sure some of them are not. Um, I think a lot of the models are slowly being phased out. We've got different army lists. Um, 
the limitations on them, how it's all presented, the different war gear. So, if you were to pick up an older army, you could use this book to, to build your list and play some games if you had access to all the, the rules. I'm not sure if it would be um, any more fun than the current game, but it would definitely be different and uh, a throwback if you were playing 25 years ago. <coughs> Unfortunately, I was not playing 25 years ago, so I got a very late start. Like I said earlier, I always wanted to play, but um, there were circumstances beyond my control that never allowed it. So here's a, was that Mark VI? I can't remember, that's a Mark VI, the Beaky. Yep, Grey Hunter and Mark VI armor, the Beaky armor. So you hardly ever see them, or not at all really, in, in modern artwork um, in the game. So in the current incarnation of the game. Took me a while to get used to those those models with their beaks and whatever. So again, this this video is just designed for somebody who's interested in Space Wolves. You might play Space Wolves or whatever and don't want to go out and hunt down this book or um, pay whatever price it's going for on eBay. The second edition stuff seems to be worth a little bit more money than uh, or considerably more money than the. Um, some of the fifth or sixth edition codexes. Um, this is probably my favorite piece from the from this book. This looks like it's by Mike Gibbons, I think was his name. Michael Gibbons, Bjorn the Fell Handed. Just a really dark, uh, uh, foreboding piece of, of artwork right here with all the black and the, the way the light's playing off the armor. It really, really come alive, so. I think that would make a great poster or or something for the game room and then here you've got what looks like an even better data card you've got his stat line um, weapons the weapon stats and then special rules um, different damage tables so you know obviously the game was played a lot different 25 years ago so um, so we'll have to have to take a lot of different things into consideration. Uh, Wolf Lord Krill Grimblood. That sounds like somebody you'd want on your side. He gets a whole page of fluff, and looks like he's got. He can have three war gear cards. He has a strategy strategy rating of six, and he can be included as a commander or an additional Wolf Wolf Lord character. So, I don't think that's a name I've seen recently in Space Wolf lore. But again, I don't play Space Wolves. Um, here is the fiction. It's uh, by William King. Um, there's probably, looks like, five pages of it right here. I don't think you see a lot of actual fiction involving the characters. Um, in current codexes, you'll see fluff and you'll see... Um, history and of course the Horus Heresy and the, all the information about uh, some of the past but to actually have fiction where there's characters talking and having conversations and you know landing on planets via drop pods and stuff that's I think that's more of an old school tradition and it's a shame because I love William King's writing and uh, a lot of the fiction is, is really good and then at the end we have <clears throat> the models and their parts um, you know, if you wanted this particular backpack or, uh, you know, banner backpack, then you could just say the part number and Games Workshop could order it or Gaming Store could order it. I like the one of Fjorn, Bjorn the Fell Handed here with his exploded diagram and all his individual parts. That's almost like the assembly instructions built in. So it was cool that you could take a look at the codex and see exactly what models in their their parts you could be getting with the um, what you had available to you rather than um, that was specific for for your army um, you've got some old weapons here an Imperial Last Cannon Missile Launcher Mark II Heavy Bolter Mark II and somewhere in here there's a Captain Terminator Honors Backpack Cloak somewhere in here 
Yeah. You've got a unit of Devastators. Heavy Bolter. Looks pretty normal right there. And then if you come down right here, look how big that thing is. It looks like a normal Bolter, but just like five times the size. And he's only holding it with one arm, so he obviously knows what he's doing. They don't even have two, two hands on it. You think a weapon like that, a las gun or something, would have enough recoil to knock one of these guys on their asses, but they're they're tough. Here we've got an, another Imperial Las Cannon, Missile Launcher, Plasma Guns, uh, multi multa so the... I mean, it's all still recognizable, but the quality has come so far in the last 25 years, you can really see the difference, so... Um, here we've got, let's see, examples of completed Mark 7, 6, and 3 space marines so this guy right here that looks like maybe that's the mark three the helmet looks considerably different so really cool stuff being able to see how how the game's evolved and <clears throat> where it's changed in some places and stayed the same in others so um here's some terminators thunder hammer storm shield cyclones lightning claws different storm shields Storm Bolters, and then more Terminators over here. Here's the Chain Fist. Really cool stuff. And then getting towards the end, we've got the vehicles. Here's the Land Raider. I think if anything's changed in the last 25 years, it's the Land Raider. I have a Land Raider for my World Eaters and my, uh, Excuse me, my Land Raiders are for my Death Watch and my World Eaters, and they definitely don't look like that. This has got Ultramarine markings on it, so you'd never see that in a, a current um, Space Wolf's Codex. It would all be it would all be very um, specific to the army being discussed. The Predator and the Rhino, those look relatively the same, a little bit different. I kind of like the look of the the older models too. It'd be nice to have some of those. Um, laying around, this is Dark Angels. Here's Blood Angels, so I guess they weren't too worried about crossing things up across the armies in a single codex. And then here at the, the last page, where I can get it in the light, is you've got, you got Space Wolves here, but then you've also got Dark Angels, Blood Angels, Ultramarines over here. A little bit of everybody just hanging out. Um, I don't see any chaos or Xenos or anything, so I guess they're just having a having a meeting or something. So that's it. That is the Space Wolves Codex from the second edition. Um, definitely one of the cooler books. I don't have a lot of the older codexes, uh, but I wanted to show this one off because uh, I think I am going to get rid of it. Maybe trade it for some. For some models, you know, 50 bucks will buy some plastic or some paint. So, um, for all you out there that are interested in Space Wolves or collect the army, like the fiction, if you have any questions about what's in here, you can leave me a comment or uh, send me a message and I'd be happy to respond. So, yeah, thanks for watching and hope you enjoy the channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and ring the notification bell. I'll have, uh, I'll have more videos coming up soon. I've got another one for Ultramarines, and then um, some of the other stuff will be a surprise. Okay, thanks.